Are you starting to lose some distance with your irons or you generally just not got the power that you would like to possess when you've got an iron in your hand? Well, if that's the case, today's video and tip could be just the thing you are looking for because I can guarantee you by the end of this video, you'll be hitting these things further than before. So today's episode of Testing the Tips comes from Eric Cagorno Golf. Now we've not featured Eric on the channel as yet and as ever there will be a link in the description below to Eric's full and perhaps more detailed explanation than what I'm going to provide you right now and as I said it's my very much my interpretation of Eric's video but essentially what he's looking to do is create more club head speed with less effort in what is effectively a three stage drill. Now, it's a very simple drill, but it's also a very effective one. And we're going to start off with step one of making sure we get more club head speed and generating more distance with our irons. Right, okay, now we're going to need something, a little bit of a prop in, um, to assist you in being able to carry out this drill. And we're going to do phase one and phase two of this drill in this next stage. Now then, what Eric talks about is how many of us golfers, average golfers maybe, look to generate a lot of power from the top of the backswing into that impact location so you'll know yourself you put a huge amount of effort into that right behind the ball so from the top of the swing we often rush that element as well now what he's looking to do is get you to increase your club head speed through that impact location up to the top of your swing and the drill or the first phase of the drill you're going to do is look to place something just behind your address position I'm using a tee box here, using a basket of balls at the driving range, a head cover, anything like that, that restricts you in swinging that club back because we're not going to use any backswing at this stage. And what we're going to look to do, let's move the ball out the way for now, is we're going to look from the, um, our address position through to the top of our swing as fast as we can. So all you're looking to do is looking to push through and I'm going to, again, push through to the top of your swing. That feels very strange because you're automatically, first of all, what you want to do is from this position, your brain is trained to go that way. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. So just get your address position, realize that you're not going back and push through. Now, trust me, it feels very weird. It feels very odd indeed, but it feels very different because what I'm not doing is I know that in my full swing, I have not got that feeling through that impact location i know that i haven't so i don't stay through the ball i'm generally hitting down and coming up a lot quicker and that's the bit that interests me in the sort of real feel in the full swing that it starts to develop so all you're going to do is keep on practicing flicking through it's supposed to feel very rushed very um a lot of energy and um effort going into it and I know that you might look at that and think it looks pretty slow, but trust me, getting from that standstill position into the top of your backswing, uh, your top of your swing without any backswing, is really difficult to do. So that's phase one. All you're doing is getting some practice swings in from your dress position and through the ball. Right, then we're going to move away from our obstacle. We don't want that anymore because what we're going to do is we're going to take our club and we're going to extend the swing to what would be sort of waist height in our backswing. We're going to do it exactly the same. So from the address position, we're not using a ball by the way, just step away from the ball a little bit, get into your sort of waist height in your backswing, but then get that same feeling of increasing your club head speed through that impact into the top of your swing so the drill goes where you get to there and then you start to really rush through and this is where you feel a real difference and for me this now feels a lot more natural than what we did from having the obstacle in the back from just going from the sort of address position to getting from here to the top of there quickly but it's kind of, it's that obvious kind of um, move forward because you, uh, all you're doing is extending what you've just felt through that sort of, through the swing, through to the top of the swing. And you just, it, 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 it's a weird feeling. I mean, you can probably see I'm struggling to sort of even explain what I'm experiencing. You've got to go and try this because what we're going to do then is all we're going to do eventually we're going to hit a golf ball obviously but we're going to hit a golf ball first of all with just this swing 
to the waist height and then through and let's see what happens now don't go anywhere because i've got to admit when i first started trying this drill i thought it was really weird i didn't think it was going to work but trust me it does 100 percent right so out of interest i'm using a seven iron let's get address the ball let's just first of all get to there and whip through that's my few practice swings off and go let's put a ball in and let's feel that exact same things up there wow do you know what I mean the, the interesting thing is I've just said off camera it feels really weird because with a lot of these tips what I do I generally experience them I've had a little bit of a practice of this before and then I'm really surprised I just even with that half swing and I probably my guess would be watching that back on the other camera is I've probably extended that higher than my waist height because it's a natural thing it's very hard to control and what you're mind thinks you're doing often with the golf swing you're doing something quite different so my guess is i think i wouldn't have hit that ball that far unless i extended that further than what i was supposed to do but just watch that one back first of all it's a great distance we've just traveled with seven iron in hand from what felt like half a swing but it's a really crisp contact and what it also does like i said it just focuses the mind on hitting the back of that golf ball and more importantly for me the feeling i'm getting is i'm staying lower through that contact position for longer instead of my normal swing which would be very much sort of coming up and out of the shot so that's been a real positive for me is not just the fact that am i generating more club head speed probably am i going longer in distance probably but more importantly i'm getting a much better crisper contact onto the back of that ball right my advice would be just keep on trying that drill at a half swing effectively or a half back swing at least and make sure you get to the top of that back swing as fast as you can is two more shots that i tried which in all honesty weren't as successful on that first one that i put on camera which to be honest with you i couldn't have hit any better the second two i leaked out a little bit to the right even though they were really crisp strikes and i'm not too bothered about that because the next phase if you like step three is probably hopefully going to eradicate that problem for me in leaking right and that's all about sort of engaging the lower body a bit more and getting a little bit energetic in terms of moving into the ball which perhaps on those two that you've seen i'm just a little bit behind the ball in terms of my body this is a bit of a sequence thing where what eric talks about is when you're starting to get to the top of your backswing you're going to start to move your hips and your weight more towards the ball so club heads go in that way and then hips are going that way just before we start to make that turn into our swing and what that is really going to do is start to get hopefully a bit of shaft lean we're going to get a much more penetrating ball fight we're going to make sure that our hands are ahead of the ball at impact as well so don't forget let's get that first bit whipping through and then we're going to go to the full swing and as we go to the full swing we go that way and we start to move the other way now what i've got to or let me rephrase that our arms get to the top of our back swing and as they're reaching that way we're starting to move our weight slightly in terms of that front left lead foot back towards the ball and generate that kind of uh, like i said lag if you like and that's what we're hoping to do so i'm going to give that a go and we're going to see if we can get as good a contact as what i did off that first ball because that was so so good so i'm just going to go to here first ball that's a real good drill before you hit your irons it's just that practice shot on the tee or practice swing really gets you in a good position now a little bit closer to the ball we're going to go back you can hear obviously a much crisper sound i mean again that has still gone out right hand side it's a lot further than the two we just seen previously but you can see how crisp the strike is and for me it's a different feeling a different sensation that i am used to completely and it's something you would have to work on but it's a real good drill that you can take to the driving range and you can sort of i think sort of that half swing if you like or half back swing through to the top of your back swing generating that extra club head through the uh, impact location give it a go and see what you think because it's a real interesting one i think it's not going to be for everybody but i think for a lot of golfers you'll really start to understand why you're perhaps losing a little bit of power losing a little bit of distance with your irons in hand and this could be a really useful tip 
well done eric i like it and like i said that's my interpretation go to eric's channel go to the link below and uh, see what he has to say probably give a better explanation than i did right that's another episode of testing the tips you seem to be enjoying these right now it's certainly helping my game and hopefully it's helping yours as well so keep on uh, giving me comments down below this came eric kagorn i had never heard of him before it came from you as uh, as, a, as a comment that someone suggested we look at his channel so keep on putting them forward and we'll keep checking them out and keep on giving my interpretation and i'll let you know what i think of them right thanks for watching and i'll see you all soon so crisp really good so basically by sort of for me it's a case of I've got to loosen up a little bit in the backswing and you can feel that explosion then through there again just leaked out yeah leaked out to the right hand side this is a couple more that we ended up filming and moved from the tee to where I landed on the fairway and uh, it was just really interesting that it, for me the one thing I've noted and just bear, bear in mind yourselves is I was kind of like throttling the club really got a tight grip to try and generate that power through and that sort of had issues if you like so I just loosened up relax a little bit and then really start to sort of maybe get a little bit of a firmer grip through that impact location so for me I'd have to work on it a little bit but there's no doubt you want to go out and try this one it's a hundred percent a much crisper strike my irons haven't been great the last few days I've been honest with you the two days here it's been the weakest part of my game I've been okay but I haven't struck the ball anything like and I wish to record this video two days ago and I might have had some better scores here around Cardona Yeah, yeah. I'll do it.